Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to another great episode of Royal Black and Elite. And today I am just through the roof happy because I have officially reached over 106,000 views on my videos. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. It's because of you, my royalists, who tune in each week to hear another great story about a royal black um, and elite African-American in history. And so thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. And today I've got a great show for you. We're going to find out about a man named Granville Taylor Woods, and he's also known as Granville T. Woods. If you like to ride roller coasters, you want to know this man. He was born on April the 23rd, 1856 in Columbus, Ohio, and he is known as the Black Thomas Edison. And wait till I tell you the little drama that happened between he and Thomas Edison. But he was really born during a time of great innovation. There was still a lot of slavery, and uh, but his family, his mom and dad were actually free. Um, his mother, her name was Ma uh, Martha J. Brown. She was a Native American. They have no pictures of her or, or his father, Cyrus Woods. He was African American. Now, when his mom and dad were married, they had, well, the mother had like five kids, but they also had two other children, which are Granville's siblings. One was named um, Rachel, which is the sister, and one was named Lydis. There's no pictures of them, no history of them, but I did at least want to share uh, their names. The year he was born in 1856, I thought so interesting because it was the same year that Dallas was incorporated. Booker T. Washington was actually born that year as well, but the country was really on the verge of innovation. And this young man, Granville Taylor Woods, was right there on the cusp of innovation with it because he could only go to school till he was 10 years old and then he had to go to work. That was a plight of a lot of young uh, black Americans during that time. Well, a lot of Americans, period, during that time. And he went to, um, he, after he stopped going to school, he was able to become an apprentice. Now, as an apprentice, he learned, I'm um, at a machine shop, and he learned the trades of machinist and blacksmith. Some publications state that he also received two years of college-level training in electrical and mechanical engineering, but there's no record of him ever graduating. I think this guy was just a really smart guy. He was mechanically inclined. He was very smart, very in, in, inquisitive, and he learned a lot. And so because of that, he was so, I think he was clearly a genius, and because of that, it showed up when he was only 16 years old in 1872, when he became a fireman on the Danville and Southern Railroad in Mississippi. And only two short years later, he became an engineer in Springfield, Illinois. And I mentioned the fire station because my son is a, a lieutenant um, fireman. So I'm very proud of him. So he was already moving up. And just like him, he was really smart as well. By 1880, Granville, he became the chief engineer for a steamer called the Ironsides. And by 1881, he moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, where he established his business as an electrical engineer and inventor. From the moment he opened his business, the inventions were rolling off the presses. I mean, he invented things like the automo uh, automatic brake the egg incubator, and he made improvements to existing technologies, such as the safety circuit, the telegraph, the telephone, and the phonograph. In 1884, he received his first patent for a steam boiler furnace, and in 1885, he patented uh, something that was kind of like a mix between a phone and a telegraph. It was called a telegraphony. Now, hopefully I said that right, but what it did was it would send the voice and telegraph messages through Morse code. Now, he was inventing during a time um, when, like, Carl Benz, the uh, creator of B Mercedes Benz, was creating. So here he is in the thick of it. And that was around 1885, 86. Well, in 87, he created one of his greatest inventions. And this was a great time because, again, there were a lot of in innovations. And he created something called the Synchronous. It was a multiplex railway telegraph, and it was so successful that Thomas Edison sued him twice to try to get ownership of it, but he lost, and he wasn't no dumb man, so he offered him a job, but of course, Woods declined it. Now, in 1880. 
eight, his invention improved the safety of above ground rail systems, which improved um, safety because the wires, um, they were no longer exposed. He, he covered them up. And it was successfully tested in February 1892 in Coney Island on the figure eight roller coaster. It was a great success. Now, some people say that Woods found it and, and discovered the roller coaster, invented it, but he really didn't. Um, he came along and he perfected it. The name of the man who really created the roller coaster was named Lamarcus Thompson. And so together they created a great uh, device that we still use today. In Glanville, he was just so successful. People would try to steal his ideas and his inventions. People were racist toward him. And there was this one man um, that cre um, stole a part of his invention. It was a piece of it. His name was James S. Zerby. And he stole it and went to London. And within that one year that he was in Europe, his invention was worth $1 million. But, you know, Granville wasn't, you know, a man who was that successful. You can tell he was not one to put up with that. So he put an ad out in the newspaper to say, don't do business with this man. And they put Woods in jail, even though this Zerby guy had stolen his invention. But you know what? That did not even matter. He was not pleased, but he still kept going. Um, in 1893, he patented his invention and he sold it to General Electric in 1901. And that wasn't the only invention uh, that he sold. He sold to several different companies uh, during the time that he was alive. There's not much um, about his wealth, so I, don't, I can't tell you how much money that he had or how much he made before he passed away. I can't tell you about his personal life. They've said that he was married to a woman named Ada Woods. Um, and they apparently were divorced in 1891 over an affair he supposedly had, allegedly. Um, he passed on January 30th, 1910, of a cerebral hemorrhage at only 54 years old at the Harlem Hospital in New York City. He had left Cincinnati long years ago because of uh, discrimination back in the 1890s. And so that's where he did the rest of his inventions and uh did all of his patents. So despite all of the obstacles, Woods is credited with over 50 appliances, mechanisms, and 27 patents. And a lot of it we still use today. Again, if you love roller coasters, then you love Woods. He's interred at the St. Michael Cemetery in Elmhurst, Queens, which was unmarked uh, until 1975 when historian M.A. Harris convinced Westinghouse, General Electric, and American Engineering to give him a proper headstone. So um, in 2004, the New York City Transit Authority, they honored Woods. And it's just so great that, you know, the world is finally waking up to some of these really great men. And in 2006, he was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. In 2008, the corner of Steelwell and Mermaid Avenue in Brooklyn was renamed Branville T. Wood. So congratulations to him. Because of him, we have many of the inventions of today. And so I'm so excited that I was able to present Mr. Granville T. Woods to you. And I wanted to leave with a honorable mention. Last week on my community page, I posted a picture of a man named A.C. Richardson. And he is the inventor of the pulley or the thing that lowers the casket down uh, into a cemetery, into the, the plot. And I thought it was so interesting, but as I tried to look him up and find out more information about this gentleman, there was no information about him other than what he invented. But his life was was really uh, shrouded in mystery. Uh, some people say that he was born uh, on May 19th, 1824. Some people say 1880. Some people say he died in 1964. Some people say not. So we didn't know a lot about him. And that's the only reason I didn't do a, a complete video about him. But he did in invent the butter churner or a, a component of the butter churn, as well as something called the insect destroyer. So A.C. Richardson, named Albert Richardson, was out there really creating during these years of great innovation um, in America. And I am just so glad we were a part of it.
I had so much fun looking up these inventors. So if you want to hear more about them, just let me know. Because I have, I'll have a whole series on them. They're so interesting. I want to thank you all for liking, sharing, subscribing, always hanging out with me here on Royal Black and Elite. Just you taking a few minutes to press like really pushes it through the algorithm. We're trying to grow, so we thank you. And I'll see you on another great episode of Royal Black and Elite.